Good morning, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and do what? We're going to be glad in it. Today is November the 2nd, 2021, and I'm excited to share this morning devotion with you. I'm thankful for the journey that we are on together, growing in the Word of God, growing in our faith, and growing in our obedience to the will and the way of God. This is a great time to be alive. It's a great time to be connected to the body of Christ. And it's a great time to experience what God is doing in these last and evil days. Again, we want to remind you, if you're not a member of our ministry, you're not a partner of the Freedom Church, we're asking you to faithfully support all of the many initiatives that we provide for you to be encouraged daily, uplifted, inspired, and simply reminded of who God said that you are. We're asking you to give $5 a week, $1 a day, as we continue to provide positive, helpful, powerful insight that just makes your day a little bit better because you've got a word of God that guides you as you go through all of the various challenges that we face in this world. Today's lesson is simply entitled, You're Supposed to Be Different. You're Supposed to Be Different. I'm getting this from Ephesians, the second chapter, the 10th verse. Here's what it says. For we are the product of his hand. Heaven's poetry etched on lives. Created in the anointed. Jesus, to accomplish the good works God arranged long ago. What a powerful passage that points to the fact that you're supposed to be different. I love how the Bible says that we are the product of God's hand, that we are heaven's poetry etched on lives, created in the anointed Jesus to accomplish the good works that God arranged long ago. I cannot help but focus on that last part of the verse, to accomplish the good works God arranged long ago. As I look at the verse, I cannot help but see that there's an S on the word work, which makes it plural, good works arranged by God long ago. It is apparent that every believer has an assignment. It's apparent that every believer has a purpose and a calling. And I know that there is some deal of confusion when it comes to the clarity of what is purpose and what is calling. So if you'll allow me a few minutes, I would like to provide some clarity as to what is purpose and what is calling. Because you need to understand that you have both on your life. You need to understand that because you are the product of God's hand, heaven's poetry, that you are someone who has a divine purpose. But not only do you have a divine purpose, you also have a divine calling. So Pastor Joe, what's the difference between purpose and a calling? I'm so glad you asked. Purpose is how God made you. Let me say it again, because this illuminates and clarifies what purpose is. Purpose is how God made you. You say, well, Pastor Troy, what is calling? I'm so glad you asked. Calling is where God expects for you to fulfill your purpose. Aren't you glad you tuned in to the Freedom Church radio show? <laughs> yeah, so you got to understand that purpose and calling are different, but yet they work together in unity. Why? Because purpose is how God made you. Calling is where God expects for you to fulfill your purpose in accordance to how he made you. So the true essence of purpose is really personality oriented. In other words, how God made you. And the true essence of calling is really a path and a place for your assignment. See, God did not save you. God has not kept you. God has not protected you for you to do what you want to do. 
No, brothers and sisters, God has invested all that he has invested in you. God woke you up today, breathe the breath of life in you once again, because you have purpose and calling that he's looking to you to fulfill. I need you to understand something, that you are the way that you are for a righteous reason. Now that's good to me, and I'm going to say it again because I want it to kind of ring in your ears for the rest of today. You are the way that you are for a righteous reason. And I know some of you are shaking your head because you're saying, Pastor Troy, you don't know me, brother. I'm messed up. I'm jacked up. I got issues in my tissues, man. I am a hot mess.com. And here's what I'm telling you. Those voices that you hear in your head, they're lies. That little voice you hear in your head that keeps telling you that something's wrong with you, lies. That voice you hear in your head that says you're too flawed, too broken, too jacked up, too this or too that to be used by God. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, it is nothing but a pack of lies being fed to you by our enemy, Satan. Why? Because Satan knows that if you ever discover that you are the way that you are for a righteous reason and that God wants to take everything in your life and use it for his ministry. What is the ministry of God? To spread the good news. What is the ministry of God? To make sure that men and women know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What is the ministry of God? To let the light that he represents shine bright in the people that he has redeemed. And it has nothing to do with all of those idiosyncrasies that you think are negativities, all of the hangups and all of the problems and even your flaws and your mistakes and even the challenges you have in your life. God has given you purpose and God has given you a calling, but a call is no good until somebody answers. A purpose is no good until somebody says yes and surrenders to the will, the way, and the word of God. I want to give you a great dose of truth, but I want to make sure you are ready for it. Here's the truth. God is ready to use you and your personality right where you are right now. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next year, not when you get it all together. No, God is ready to use you and your personality right where you are right now. See, what you think of as a mess, God sees as a message. And he wants you to be his messenger who puts his message in motion. You are able to take your life and use it for the glory of God. You're able to say to people, this is who I used to be, and this is who I am, and then point to God and say, and this is the reason why I am not what I used to be. See, becoming who God made you to be isn't about discovering who you are. And I have heard this talk and I cringe every time I hear it, because it is misinformation, it is inaccurate, and it takes us away from the true heart of God. People say, well, you gotta discover who you are in God. No, 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 you don't have to discover who you are in God because becoming who God made you isn't about discovering who you are. Becoming who God made you is about spreading the message of who God is. It's about spreading the message of who God is and how God is working in you how God is working for you, how God is working through you. You do that and I promise you, you're definitely going to discover who you are. But what difference does it make for you to discover who you are when you haven't first discovered who God is? See, once you discover who God is, I promise you, you will discover who you are. Why? Because your identity is wrapped up and tied up into who God is. Becoming who God made you isn't about discovering who you are. It's about harnessing all of those attributes that make you you and then using them as assets for God 
instead of letting Satan use them as liabilities against God. To use those assets to advance the kingdom of God, to use your personality, to use your voice, to use your experience, to use your testimonies to advance the message of God and to advance the knowledge of God. But we have a problem. The problem is simple. You will never fulfill that purpose and you'll never fulfill that calling being like the world. You're supposed to be different. I dare somebody to say, Pastor Troy, why am I supposed to be different? Here's the answer to that question. You're supposed to be different because the message you carry is different. You're supposed to be different because the God you represent is different. And last but not least, you're supposed to be different because your reason for living is supposed to be different. And God is reminding all of his people not to be like the world. Because if you're more like the world than you are like the word of God, you're going to find out that you aren't that different from the people who don't even profess to know God. You'll discover that you really aren't that much different from those who don't go to church, those who don't pray, those who don't read their Bible, those who do not live their lives by the moral instructions of God's word. You're going to discover you're really not that different from folks who have no affiliation with God whatsoever. And when you find that to be the truth, you must realize that you have failed to fulfill your divine purpose and your divine calling. Here's the good news. God is ready to use you and your personality right where you are, right now. It's my prayer, my heart's desire. I know it's the will of God that today will be the day that many of you will say, I hear you, God. That many of you will say, God, you're speaking to me and I give you my yes today. I wanna pray a prayer that I believe will put you in the proper position to reconnect with God, to recommit with God, and to reinstate both your purpose and your calling. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next year. God is ready to use you and your personality right now, right where you are. Would you join me in prayer? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for making me distinctive by design. As a matter of fact, why don't you repeat after me? Lord, I thank you for making me distinctive by design. Remove any stubbornness. Remove any foulness. Remove any foolishness that would block the best of me from shining and leading in alignment with your assignment that you have placed on my life. I want to be used by you for your glory. In Jesus name, amen, amen, and amen. Wow, you are supposed to be different. What a beautiful way to start a beautiful day. And I want you to make sure that you continue to have a beautiful day no matter what comes your way.
until next time, keep looking up, fulfill the purpose, and answer the call to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. God bless. Thank you.